The way I use drawing in my job is different from the way I use drawing in my own art practice. That's quite important to say, in a sense, even though one does feed into the other. The way that uh, drawing is very important in my job is in trying to bridge the um, ideas that maybe students have and my understanding of them, or even the students' understanding of them. So it's very important, because the students are coming at Chelsea from such a wide and diverse range of backgrounds, their understanding of drawing is also very wide in, in terms of what they understand. And when they come to me with ideas about what they want to make as sculptors or designers, we need to find some kind of common ground and way of understanding what they've got. Now some, uh, some artists, some students come with things that are very easy to understand for me, but then sometimes they're not, and sometimes they're not fully formed ideas. So the act of drawing within the workshop is something that helps to clarify what they're doing. But sometimes if their work still is only semi-complete, if it's only part of an idea they have, it's very important for us to be able to sort of move it forward somehow. And if they haven't actually made anything, all they have is a few scribbles and a few ideas, and quite often they'll spend time sort of gesticulating in the air in a kind of a marso marso way about what they want. That can also be very confusing. So the, the whiteboard, which we, we have several whiteboards in the metal workshop, and they're very important to how we operate there, in that it means that we can do collaborative drawings. That doesn't mean they have to do that. Drawing is in itself a difficult act for some, and it can be embarrassing for some of them. They can find it difficult. But it will be where I will translate perhaps what they've drawn onto the whiteboard and do my own interpretation of it and say, well, so this is what we're thinking. I've got some examples here, if you can see it. You want this object to pivot, you want it to spin, you want it to do several things. Is this what we're thinking about? Is it going to be something like this? Is it something like this? These are drawings from an actual student's work that we did. Um, he wanted to make a, a saddle that you could sit on that would, at the other end, would have a sculpture on a pivot. He's, even as I'm describing it with my hands, it's not working, is it? You need the drawing. And he needed to know how to make the pivot work. So we did several drawings of uh, the pivots, to try and work out what would be the best. On that one it's rounded and this one it's not. This is a very simple one, this is an early drawing. I don't know if you can see that on there. Um, this, I've got a picture of what we ended up with here, if you can make sense of that from your camera. You can see the pivot down here, you can see his saddle and where his sculpture was going to sit. Uh, so, well, that's that, that's that drawing. I've got a few more here of um, students' drawings that we did in terms of thinking about sort of runners, bearings, nuts and bolts. Quite often they'll come and they won't even know what nut and bolt is. I mean, they'll know what it is but they won't know the word for it. They might not know the technical word, or even, as I've been corrected, it's actually a machine screw. And if its thread goes all the way up, and it's only a bolt if it's actually got a blank bit at the top, as I was told. Um, but how to make this thing that would move and shift, it was supposed to be a handbag. So this is one of the first drawings we did that helps us to try and work out how this thing might shift and move. This bar had to shift through this sort of space, but we held so it could run through. Does that make sense? Well, that's the drawing. That's what we ended up with. Um, it's only a detail of it. It doesn't show you what the whole thing is. Uh, it's a design student. It actually ended up being part of this, which is supposed to be a mobile pan bag that sort of moves. So you hold the handle, the whole thing spins, but the middle bit stays still. That was a problem we had to try to work out, how to make it move, but the middle bit stays still, so there had to be bearings and moving parts that uh, wouldn't be affected by the movement of the outside. Um, sometimes in my own art practice I have to do drawings to try and work things out. I have here some collaborative drawings that I did with a collaborative artwork that I did with uh, Francis Thorburn. I can find that. that went through several stages. It was a vehicle that was going to be used to be the starter car. You know when you do a warm-up lap around a track, uh, quite often for cars and for bicycles. This is a warm-up vehicle for a performance piece that was happening at uh, near Hoxton Square. This is one of the early drawings that we did. Um, we decided quite early on that this big wheel, which is a feature of Francis Thorburn's uh, sculptures quite often, 
was going to be part of it, but also quite early on we decided we were going to use a transit van, just sort of a people's, people's car somehow, and that was going to be part of it, we combined it. It went through several stages from that. I think in the end we ended up doing something like 120 drawings. I think this is a, another one we did here, slightly more flamboyant. We were running out of time. We were never going to make this, it was too complicated. Um, and just so you can see it, there's this final product. Uh, it was very popular in the show. It did two laps uh, at a square near Hotsome Square and uh, was covered in children after that. Anyway, from drawing to object. Um, drawing is used quite often to work, solve a lot of different problems, not always mechanical problems like that, but in terms of trying to work out process and how to approach process in making. Um, I've got an example here of, of somebody who needed to cut a large cylinder out of some polystyrene. This was the first part of a drawing that we needed to do to work out how he was, he was, going, he was going to shape a hot wire to be able to shape it. He'd never done it before, so we had to work out what the shapes were in terms of the cube, so he could get his head around what the shape was going to be of the former, so that he could draw in the air. So that was a very early drawing, and uh, we ended up with this at the end, which he covered in all sorts of things. Um, and another one, my Bob Dylan moment of passing these things through, another early drawing for a piece by Sarah Pager, which was actually out on the parade ground at Chelsea. This is a very early stage of drawing of a bath that's cut in half. And we needed to think about how that bath could float in the air and how it was going to be supported in a way with it rather than sticking it on a plinth. So an early stage drawing there. Then she decided she wanted it to be more than one bath. So we ended up with a drawing like this, which has got a few more calculations. A lot of the drawings I've shown you so far actually haven't got the measurements on as such because they're at different stages. This one actually has all the measurements on it in terms of the baths. You can just about see the baths here and the heights are actually you wanted them ascending. And also some of the lines that we were doing at the bottom to try and decide what the shape should be of the support because she wanted it just one piece of metal. Um, and we worked out that it needed somehow to be kind of an S shape for it to support it without actually having to have brackets sticking out somehow or other. Um, so, well, to give you an idea of what it ended up looking like, it's actually on the Chelsea website and you can see it somewhere. Um, that was the final piece. And you can see that. 